It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. Mary Oliver. A belted Galloway calf in a Rockport pasture flirts with her photographer. You may have seen in road or street at times when passing by a creature with bewildered bleat behind a milker's tail whose feet went pit-pat. That was I, Thomas Hardy. Arriving in Wyoming in the dark of night, we awakened to find we were sleeping unaware in the presence of magnificence. The Grand Tetons tower above us, humbling all that we are, have done, or will ever do. Left behind on a Colorado ranch, the hayrake rusts in the field, reaching for the grass that eludes it, curling its fingers, longing to roll, but stuck in its ruts under the mountain sun, it waits. Twelve hunk, 12,000 feet high in the Rocky Mountain National Park, delicate alpine plants cling to the barren rock, bereft of soil, nutrients, adequate water. But answering the call of its ancient ancestors, it takes hold, seizes the sunlight, and blooms. An enormous thundercloud parks itself on the nose of Independence Rock, Casper, Wyoming, and everything else is a little smaller. Superheated water wraps geology in mystery in Yellowstone National Park. A bubble of the Earth's melted middle, way down deep, rises to paint the landscape with steam. A left-behind curtain hangs in a miner's ghost town cabin in Garnet, Montana. The winter winds unravel it one thread after another, year after year after year. Battered by storms, bent by rocks, a bold tree rises in the mist of Olympic National Park and stands as tall as it can. Sea stacks on the Washington coast, ancient monoliths arise out of the fog to keep watch among the breakers while tiny adults play at their feet. California giants reach for the sun while gripping the earth. Their trunks are a bridge to the unknown. Mount Zion National Park. A ram stands his ground, blood pulsing through his veins, powerful like the rock on which he stands. Move me, he cries. I dare you. Hoodoos in Bryce Canyon, colorful witnesses to the slow passing of the ages. Layer by layer, they tell our Earth story and the patient care with which all is made. Like a supplicant in a dry and ancient desert, a fallen tree seeks mercy from the sun. Be silent and listen to her prayer. Twenty-seven hundred feet below, the Gunnison River carves the Black Canyon, one day, 
one grain of sand at a time as it turns silver under the westering Colorado sun. A twisted juniper tree, hundreds of years old but only 15 feet in height, stands without apology where no tree, no thing, no creature could possibly survive, and yet it does. The Colorado foothills stretch to the horizon in the early morning mist, inviting our breath to follow. A turkey vulture eyes me, a novice hiker, lost on a high ridge while he is pondering my chances. <laughs> Am I entertainment or dinner? <laughs> Back home in Maine, a great blue heron and her reflection fly over and under a down east bog. On a cold morning, the rising sun welcomes us home. Just pay attention. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. Thank you.